Uh, some thoughts on Acts and chapter 7, verses 23 to 53. Verses 20 through to 53. And here we are thinking about Moses primarily. But it's going to be in the whole context of the development of Stephen's sermon to prove that he is connecting back into the Old Testament with the big Old Testament people and the big Old Testament themes. Let's remember, as we're coming into this sermon, that Stephen is a big man for God. However, the authorities have accused him of, go back to chapter 6 and verse 11, they've accused him of speaking blasphemous words against Moses and against God, and also in verse 13, they said he never ceases to speak words against this holy place and the law. So really there's three categories there, that he speaks against God, he speaks against Moses, and the connection there with the law, and he speaks against this holy place. And the sermon is really developed by Stephen to prove, no, he's speaking for God, he's speaking for the law of Moses, and he's speaking for the holy place. He's not one who is rejecting these things but he's speaking of them properly so we're going to come in in this consideration now into verse 20 and we pick up Moses now there's already been a hint uh, we've seen it in verse 17 about uh, how uh, sorry in verse uh, 9 about how the patriarchs jealous of Joseph sold him into captivity but God was with him the deliverer, Joseph, has been rejected. He has been resisted. And that's going to be a critical theme that's picked up. So we see that Moses comes on the scene. Uh, we see his, his background, how God placed him strategically there in the Egyptian courts. So we're seeing how he was born, verse 20 uh, to 22. And that was his background, brought up in the Egyptian court, as the treated as the son of Pharaoh. However, here's the beautiful thing. He was mighty in his words and deeds. He is a man who God is working for and within. So at 40 years old, this will be the first uh, chunk, uh, uh, that, that's the first chunk of his life, we might say, verses 20 to 23, the first 40 years. Of, uh, and then verse, uh, verse 23, 20 to 22, you rather, the first 40 years. Verse 23 then, he was 40 years old, he came to his heart to visit his brothers, the children of Israel. So here he is, the deliverer is coming to his people, the children of Israel. And we see when there was this uh, this conflict, he, one of them was being wronged, verse 24, he intervenes, he avenges the Egyptian. He allies himself with the people of Israel. And just, just get some parallels here about the Lord Jesus Christ coming into uh, this world, coming into this Egypt, we might say, but identifying with uh, the people of God. Verse 25, he supposed that they would realise he is the one who would bring salvation. Alas, no. Uh, when he intervenes the uh, next day, uh, verse 27, but the man who was wronging his neighbour thrust him aside, saying, uh, notice what it says, who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? At this, Moses fled and became an exile in the land of Midian, where he became the father of two sons. So the deliverer rejected. The deliverer is rejected. The one who had come, he thought he was, they would recognize that he was the one who would bring this deliverance, this salvation, but they didn't. They rejected him. And so he's away. And then the next 40 years we see, and Moses is presented to us. And we see that in verses uh, uh, 40, uh, verses 30, really, down to uh, verse uh, 43. And uh, so let's see, see what happens here. A revelation of God comes uh, at, the, uh, at the burning bush. 
Um, the God, the true God. Notice the, 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 this link again. He's speaking for God. Verse 32. The God of your fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses trembled, did not dare to look. And so he's in this holy place. And he's the deliverer. Verse 34. He come to deliver them. Deliver them out of Egypt. Deliver the people out of Egypt. But Moses says, verse 35. Notice. This Moses, whom they rejected, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge? You see, he's the rejected one. The deliverer was rejected. But he comes. He is the one, and he leads them out. Verse 36, he leads them out of Egypt. And uh, he is the one who, at the Red Sea... Uh, brings them into the wilderness, crosses the Red Sea, brings them into the wilderness, verse 36 here. And uh, then he tells them, verse 37 of the Deuteronomy 18, he is, there is this prophet who is to come, this ultimate deliverer. And uh, he is the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who fulfills that prophecy. So here he is. Uh, the one who receives the living oracles, verse 38. Uh, but verse 39, our fathers refused to obey him, thrust him aside, and in their hearts they returned to Egypt. There we see. Their hearts were wanting to go back to Egypt. They were rejecting their deliverer. Now we just want to stop here. Are we rejecting the deliverer? Are we rejecting the deliverer, the Lord Jesus Christ? Let's let's stop and think about that. He is the ultimate deliverer. However, there are, we might say, many deliverers that are placed in our situations. They might be parents. They might be school teachers. They might be leaders in the church. They might be friends who are those who bring the message of deliverance concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. And the question is, will you? Will you receive or reject those deliverers? Perhaps you are a deliverer who's bringing the message. Well, perhaps there's an encouragement here. There's a general resistance to the message. Moses was the deliverer appointed, but they rejected him. They wanted to go back to Egypt. How painful that was. We're in Exodus chapter 32 here, when he was up the mountain, and they turned their hearts against him. But here in verse 42... Then it is this sobering statement. But God ah, turned away, gave them over to worship the host of heaven. And we see this scripture uh, from uh, uh, the book of Amos. How they are destined for Babylon because of their rebellion. They should have received their deliverer and being destined for abundance in the promised land. But they were taken away to Babylon. They rejected their deliverer. Verse 44 then, we see what is in many ways a parenthesis uh, put in just to pick up this issue of the, um, of the temple, a place of worship, refers initially to the tabernacle. Uh, and basically his, his theme is here, He's not against the temple, the tabernacle. He is saying that the temple had a precursor. That's the tabernacle. So don't get carried away with the temple. And also God can be worshipped anywhere. He's just placed this tabernacle as a representation that would help uh, the people to uh, worship. But he's just saying, yeah, I'm not rejecting. I'm not dismissing the, 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 the temple. But I'm, I'm, I'm saying to you, don't make it so important. Because it says, the prophet says, uh, as it's uh, stated there, and we come into verse uh, 49, uh, quoted uh, from uh, Isaiah 66, I believe. But heaven is, uh, is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Did not my hand make all of these things? Indeed it did. So then he comes back to his theme about the deliverer in verses 51 through to 53. Here we are. And he says, you stiff-necked people, uncircumcised of heart. He'd been courteous 
Uh, we thought about that in the previous study. He'd been courteous concerning addressing them, but he is very firm. He says, this is what you have done. You always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so did you, do you. As they resisted the Holy Spirit, as they resisted the provision of deliverers, so did you. They carried on, you see, not just with Joseph, not just with Moses, but verse 52, with the prophets. The prophets were there, many deliverers to bring the message. And, then, and they were persecuted. They, they declared those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one who have now betrayed and murdered. You see, the ultimate one was betrayed and murdered. The ones who had prophesied and declared him, they were persecuted. Verse 53, you who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. He's turning it round, you say, it's you who've not kept the law. It's you who've stood against the purposes of God. And as we see the things develop from verse 54 onwards, we will see that they will reject Stephen as well as the bringer of the deliverance message. Oh, how serious these things are. Let us be thoughtful. Day, Stephen is establishing God has his flow of purpose to bring his deliverers and the ultimate one has come. He is Jesus Christ and he was rejected and he was nailed to the tree. Well, what are we to do today? May we be embracing the deliverer and may we be embracing our mini deliverers, we might say, who bring the message of deliverance. And if we are in a place of bringing the message, which probably most of us are, even if you're younger, you've probably got a place where you can be helping others to understand. Then don't be surprised if there is opposition. So that's some thoughts on Acts and chapter 7 verses twenty. To 53.